Uh, rebuild the soils, we have to bring life back into the soil, we know how to do that too. So why are we waiting? Water, better use of water, some use too much, others way too little. And here also I think we have to see how this can be done better. And look at this map here, everything which is actually uh, red, pink, uh, is going to run into trouble by 2050. Uh, the dark red is minus 55% of production. Uh, just think about the U.S. Uh, look, look at uh, your own place here. Uh, you're going to have a reduction of yield already also, down to maybe minus 20%. So the Canadians are laughing, and some people up in, uh, the, in the northern <laughs> place of Europe and uh, Russia. It's time to buy land in Greenland, I think. <laughs> Uh, biotechnology, that also was one of the issues which came up, uh, a lot of discussion, and actually it led to the, partly, not fully, but partly to the quitting of, of uh, one part of the private sector um, uh, from the assessment. And uh, biotechnology, we need to define this properly. Basically, we have nothing against beer or yogurt, and I think everybody thought that there was actually a lot of good things in there. Even molecular biology can be very helpful, or should be used much more also in sustainable agriculture. Study soils, for example. And when it comes to the modern biotechnology, the report really sort of said, well, so far, it doesn't really increase any yields, and it may actually not never do so. Very difficult. Um, there's a lot of uh, methodologi methodological limitation. If you look at the research done, actually, it's, you always compare apple and oranges here, most of the time, when they just say, you know, what does a GM crop do compared to a, tra a traditional one? And so, again, more research, if anything, the report says, is, is required. And problem-oriented. It's not so that we have a solution looking for a problem right now. We, need, we have problems out there, so what, how can we use modern technology and molecular biology to solve the problems we have? Not having something here to look to, 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 to be used. I mentioned the patent, patent issue already. And uh, the issue of liabilities, you know more than I do about this in this country and in Canada. We also need to bring the sectors in agriculture together. And we have to, to really understand agriculture itself as a system, and then agriculture in the larger system of the society, economy, and environment. And we know very little about it. Who has really done good systems research in agriculture? When we look at the, the bigger picture all the way down to the, to the smaller one. Because we need to know where to action, you know, where are the leverage points. And so that's something we got to do uh, much more in the future. Promote responsible governance at global, regional, local levels. Uh, an example, Kenya, this is from uh, two days ago, hunger crisis in Kenya. And the fingers are now pointing not to the farmers but to the politicians. And I think that's exactly where the problem lies most of the time in agriculture, is wrong decision at the political level, or no decision. Trade, that was the other reason why many countries actually did not, a uh, few countries did not sign this report, US, Canada, and Australia, no surprise. Um, because they promote um, opening uh, the borders, free trade, also for agricultural products. We all know it doesn't work. Agriculture is going to be outside of WTO because it's a total different animal than uh, cars, tires, or, or name it. <laughs> so to in my own country, we protect our borders until we can make our cheese, for sure. Uh, and again, we need to invest in long-term gains versus the short-term, the quick fixes. You remember the food crisis a year ago? What's happened? More fertilizer, more, more uh, seeds, and more pesticides. We have done this before. At every crisis, we do the same thing. We're learning nothing. And so again, we need to go and look at the causes. The cause of all these problems are many. Um, and again, that's why if you take a systems approach, we actually could really pinpoint some of the, of the main one out there. Not that we don't know some of them, but I think uh, at least to go to the politicians, to the decision makers, I think we have to go to them with, with a list and say, okay, what are the consequences of doing this or not doing this? And last point, nothing will happen unless we change the consumption pattern in the north. I mean, there's, there's clear that we need more education of the people here um, ab about consumption because there is just not enough for everybody at that rate. North America, Europe, the developed world needs to live with differently uh, if you want to make sure that the other uh, two-thirds, uh, and never mind the two billion to come, will at least have a minimum of, of, a, of, a, of a healthy life.
And that one, and you know about the ecological footprint. You know, we're eating our capital every year. It's a, year, a week earlier. We have finished with the interest of, of the globe. And so as more people come, we eat more and faster. And um, I think that agriculture actually can create goods. It doesn't have to actually, you know, eat, 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 eat up uh, the world. And uh, we decided that this report, as you can see, I mean, twice as many. So we um, distill it into this thing here. And inside there, there's even a table. So the policymakers who have no time to really think about things can, can take uh, <laughs> some guidance on, on what to do. And I think on this really table here, we try to summarize um, what uh, these this 2,000 plus pages say and for the policymaker. Thank you.